Hey there folks, this is Hutch with Freedom in a Can. Now we've been using, abusing, and testing Renogy LifePo batteries since 2019 when we first made the switch away from lead acid and installed a 50 amp hour LFP battery into our camper. Since that time, we've tested several Renogy LFP batteries of all different sizes and capacities. Battery technology just keeps getting smaller, more sophisticated, and longer lasting. Today, we're going to be swapping out this 50 amp hour battery that's been running our 12 volt fridge in the back of our truck for this Renogy Mini Core 100 amp hour LFP battery. Now, I want to be clear there's nothing wrong with this 50 amp hour battery. It's got a lot of life left in it, and we intend to put it to use in another application. We're just really curious how this 100 amp hour mini core battery is gonna do running our fridge. So we've fully charged the mini core battery and we'll use it to run our IceCo 12 volt fridge until we see it drop down to a 20% depth of discharge. Here's the battery at 100%, which was taken on October 20th. So here's what we already love about this battery. At just a bit bigger than our 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, it has twice the capacity. We also noted that we could fit four of these mini core batteries in the same space as our two pro batteries inside of our camper solar cabinet. This battery is a group 22 NF, which are uh, up to 50% smaller than typical group 31 batteries. It can also be side mounted, making it perfect for narrow spaces in small truck campers, travel trailers, and even boats. Now, previous lithium iron phosphate batteries could only be connected in parallel, but the core batteries allow for a series connection, which means you can achieve the voltage, amperage, and capacity you need between 12 and 48 volts. At just under 22 pounds, this battery is 42 pounds lighter than most other 100 amp hour lead acid batteries, and even a few pounds lighter than other lithium iron phosphate batteries. When stringing several batteries together in parallel or series, this weight savings can add up quickly. Pretty cool. Now this battery can be combined with the Renogy Battery Shunt 300 and the Renogy One Core for easy Bluetooth monitoring of charging and discharging status, SOC, temperature, as well as historical data. Now, since ours will be exposed to very cold temperatures during the winter months in the back of our truck, the auto temperature shutoff will keep the battery from being damaged. And that is key because with our older 50 amp battery, we had to remember to turn off the charging below freezing so we didn't damage it. And it can provide up to 5,000 cycles, which could last up to 12 to 13 years with proper usage and care. In other words, we won't need to replace this battery until at least 2036, and that right there is amazing. So how long could we run our fridge on a single charge? Survey says 10 days. That means we can run our fridge for more than three times longer on a single charge. It's not bad for nearly the same energy footprint. One important caveat to this, for the past 10 days, we've been driving through autumn temperatures, which have ranged widely from 75 degrees down to the low 20s and the low temperature charging protection kicked on to keep that battery from getting damaged. But it continued to power the fridge no problem. So this may skew the numbers a bit since the fridge doesn't need to run as much when it's cold outside. But hey, it's a real life scenario under real world conditions. Now let's recharge the battery using several different methods. 100 watt portable solar panel, 400 watt lightweight solar suitcase, 50 amp DC to DC charger, adding an engine charge to that solar charge, and then removing the solar and seeing what we get from the engine just by itself. And then lastly, our just-in-case method, which is a 20 amp AC to DC charger. And we'll be using the Renogy One Core Monitor to keep track of things while we're testing. So we're first gonna charge with the 100 watt portable solar panel. Let's go ahead and put it into the input on the 50 amp DC to DC charger and see what we're pulling. So under current conditions with a little bit of high cloud, we've got almost three amps going into the battery and we'll be charged in 27 hours. Well, not great for a full recharge. It's fantastic for keeping a charged battery topped off. So now we'll plug in our 400 watt lightweight portable panel. All right, so huge difference. We are getting 21.03 amps from the 400 watt panel and it'll be charged in about three hours. Okay, now we're gonna turn on the engine and get some engine charge from that 50 amp DC to DC charger. So with both solar and the engine charge going, we're getting 36.16 amps 
and it'll be back to full in two hours. So that's the fastest charging that we're gonna get on this right now. So the 50 amp DC to DC charger is gonna prioritize the MPPT, that's the solar charging. So let's see what we're gonna get when we disconnect the 400 watt panel. Right now we're showing about 12 and a half amps and fully charged in about six hours just from that engine source. Now we've been testing this 50 amp DC to DC charger for the past several weeks. And while driving, we've seen everything from 24 amps down to seven amps. And this is not what we'd expect. We think the problem might be that we have a smart alternator on our truck, but we're working with Renogy right now to figure out what's going on. And we'll have an update for you soon. And a final charging option is using our AC to DC charger, which is a 20 amp charger. This takes a shore power source alligator clips connected to the positive and negative. And over here on the core, you can see that we're going up by almost 20 amps and we should be charged up in about four hours at this rate. Here's a chart that summarizes all of our charging methods so you can compare and contrast. With as long as this battery lasts between charges, it's pretty clear that we're going to get a lot of life out of it. And that's pretty exciting. Now we also wanted to test the battery's BMS stability. So we've been deliberately driving through back roads through Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, and Utah. And some of those roads have been pretty rough as well. It hasn't missed a beat with keeping our fridge running. So far, so good. Now the installation of this battery was pretty darn simple. We needed to alter the battery box that we built for the 50 amp version just a little bit to fit the new dimensions, but other than that it was simply connecting the positive and negative cables. Since this battery does not come with a built-in Bluetooth, we installed Renogy's Battery Shunt 300 to communicate between the battery and the Renogy One Core Monitor. You can also use this with the DC Home app. The shunt can be used with any type of deep cycle battery from any manufacturer that doesn't have Bluetooth, so you can monitor it with the Renogy One Core. So there you have it, y'all. This versatile battery ticks all the boxes. Its small size punches above its weight, capacity, and lifespan. If you're looking to store a lot of power in a small space or looking for an LFP battery that can work in both a series or parallel configuration, this mini core lithium iron phosphate battery is a no brainer. Be sure to use our affiliate link in the comments below and get an additional savings with our promo code CANLIFE. Get up to 10% off on all Renogy products. See you on the road. road.